The Framingham study is an amazing study because it started in 1948 and the goal was to understand risk factors for cardiovascular disease, which at the time there was an epidemic of cardiovascular disease. There were just over 5,000 people involved in the study and they were evaluated every couple of years for their risk factors, other things that they were doing, and medical information. And it was important to track people over time because these things change. Our behaviors change. What we engage with change. The environment changes. And in addition, what we now know is genetics play an important role in most medical conditions. Even though Framingham started as a study focused on cardiovascular disease, it has expanded into looking at many more conditions. And that's what's important in keeping studies like this going is we have such a wealth of information already built up, we can continue to use that to look at new and emerging diseases as they come out. Some of the things that we actually take today as common knowledge, almost fact, were discovered in Framingham. For example, Cigarette smoking increases your risk of car developing cardiovascular disease. High blood pressure increases your risk of developing cardiovascular disease. Diabetes increases your risk. The term risk factors literally was coined by the Framingham Heart Study investigator, Dr. William B. Cannell, back in 1961. So in the 1970s, the seminal role of blood pressure for the risk of stroke and heart failure was described. In the 1980s, obesity as an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease was described. Some of my colleagues described, were the first to describe that atrial fibrillation was independently associated with stroke, atrial fibrillation being an irregularly irregular heart rhythm. And then in the early 2000s, a lot of the work came out about what is the lifetime risk of developing cardiovascular conditions. I really think that some of the things that we have done at Framingham uh, can, can affect um, public policy, public health, as well as science, and as well as um, clinicians' uh, treatment of patients. Um, even something like um, you know, a, a risk profile, when you go to your doctor's office, if they, you know, look at, you know, they put in a couple of your numbers that they've measured and they say, oh my goodness, this person has a really high risk of stroke. Let's see what we can do about some of their risk factors to prevent that. You know, that's, that's a huge uh, bonus to, to the, the patient, <laughs> you know, as well as helpful to the clinician to try to figure out what on earth to do. We would not have a heart study without the devotion and commitment of the Framingham participants and honestly without the funding of the United States government and the National Institutes of Health. It has been fundamental. It provides the backbone of the great science that has changed lives and helped prevent cardiovascular disease, stroke and many other conditions so that people can live longer and healthier lives. What, what an incredible gift the participants have given to the wor scientific world um, and to the research community, but really to the world, to people, so that there is so much data still there that has been collected and that continues to be collected. And it's, it's like a gold mine. In public health, what we aim to do is prevent disease. So we can use all of this information to identify people who are at most risk with the goal of preventing them from developing disease in the first place.